Welcome to Screen Crush, I'm Ryan Airy, and this is all of the Easter eggs, references, and little things that you might have missed in The Mandalorian Chapter 10. First of all, this episode was scary, and not because of the spiders. I was horrified that Baby Yoda was going to eat all of this poor frog lady's eggs. The opening shot is a nod to Lawrence of Arabia, much like the previous episode was an homage to classic spaghetti westerns. Mando is riding a swoop bike, a vehicle that first appeared in the Star Wars RPG in the New Hope Special Edition back in 1997. Thanks to Kalor for pointing that out to me. Last week I mistakenly said they first appeared in Star Wars Rebels, and I regret the error. Notice the sound effects are taken from the speeder bikes in Return of the Jedi. This species setting the trap is a Vaudran. They first appeared in the Darth Maul comic and are from Hut Space, which is appropriate since this little guy speaks Huttese. In case you missed it, these bounty hunters were searching for the child. Check the child! When Mando let the guy take his jetpack, did anyone else get vibes like this was Daenerys giving the slaver a dragon? Dracarys. Then he walks back into Mos Eisley where we see a few Jawas. Someone asked me on Twitter if this guy was a jaw without the robe, but I don't think he is. Different language, there's no glowing eyes, we've only ever seen these guys stick together. But if you think different, let me know in the comments below. In the cantina from A New Hope, the bartender is the droid K99, the same droid from Jabba's palace. You're a feisty little one. But now reprogrammed with Mark Hamill's voice. Unfortunately, the bounty guild no longer operates from Tatooine. Pelly is in Han Solo's old booth playing Sabacc with a giant ant. Now this is a cool addition because the director of this episode is Peyton Reed, the writer-director of the Ant-Man films. Now, I could be wrong, but this species looks to me like a Killick, an insect species that's native to Alderaan. And of course, Sabacc is the card game that allowed Han to win the Millennium Falcon. But the hand Pelly plays was also played by Lando Calrissian in the Star Wars episode, Idiot's Array. It appears I have an Idiot's Array. This is a W.E.D. Treadwell droid like the Lars family used in A New Hope, but has appeared in several Star Wars media since, like in The Clone Wars. They're cooking crate dragon meat with a pod racer engine, which is a deep cut Easter egg to Disney's Galaxy's Edge theme park. There's a restaurant there called the Ronto Roaster that claims its meat is cooked over a starship's engines. Pelly also name drops. Not some Rodian. The same species as Greedo that's also appeared in multiple other films and animated series. My Mando is forced to travel at sublight speed. Now, just a quick explanation of what that is. In Star Wars, when ships travel at light speed, they use hyperspace as a shortcut across huge distances. Now, sublight means that they're traveling in just a normal space. It's much slower, which is why it took Han and Leia so long to reach Bespin in Empire Strikes Back, which gave Luke several weeks to train on Dagobah. And finally, Peli is served by one of her pit droids that we first saw back in The Phantom Menace. On the ship, Mando name drops and speaks Hatties. Hatties, Mahala to Habaka. The language spoken by Jabba the Hutt. The display here is in Arabesh, the Star Wars alphabet. I always like to translate these for you guys. This one says, incoming comm, proximity alert. The letters here read Maldo Crease, that must be a nearby planet, and ignition offline. The X-Wing pilots who pull him over are played by Clone Wars and Rebels creator Dave Filoni, who reluctantly cameoed as the same character last season. And the second pilot is Paul Sun Young Lee, who you might know from the show Kim's Convenience. I'm not required to run a beacon. That was before. And this made me realize how boring it must be to be a New Republic soldier after the Empire fell. Uh, Razorcrest, you have a busted tail light. We're gonna need you to get that fixed. There's an auto zone and Ord Mantel just two systems over. And no wonder Cara Dune left. They're basically space cops. Also notice how the X-Wing displays have 2D graphics just like the tech the filmmakers had back in the 1970s. The space cops recognize the Razor Crest from the Prison Bake in Chapter 6 last season. Now you know the shit is about to go down when they lock S-Foils in attack position. Lock S-Foils in attack position. Now you might have thought it was weird that Mando said, May the Force be with you. Because last season, it seemed like he had no knowledge of the Force. Its species can move objects with its mind. But I interpret this to mean that this is just something that the New Republic says to each other and not everybody's aware of its actual meaning. After all, they said this a lot during the Rebellion. And may the Force be with you. There's a lot of theorizing after the trailer was released that this planet was Ilum, the planet where Jedi acquired their kyber crystals that was turned into Starkiller Base. Now, I don't think that's where this is. As we saw in the Fallen Order video game, Ilum was occupied by the Empire, and if the First Order converted it into Starkiller Base, it's unlikely it was inside New Republic space. You probably remember this droid, Zero, from Chapter 6, voiced by Richard Ayoade. Uh-huh. Bye. Good gravy. It was a brilliant callback to use him to help communicate with Frog Lady. Mandalorian, I'm just a simple frog lady looking to get my eggs fertilized. 
I also like the little detail that she eats with her really long tongue, similar to another amphibious species, the Gungans. Don't do that again. She mentions, I thought honoring one's word was a part of the Mandalorian code. Now, Mandalorians are a culture that's very big on honor, as we saw many times in Star Wars Rebels. By the way, Frog Lady is played by Misty Rosas, who is also the body of Quill in Season 1. But just like that character was voiced by Nick Nolte, I have spoken. Frog Lady was voiced by Dee Bradley Baker, the voice of all the clone soldiers in the Clone Wars. It's pretty neat since another clone, Boba Fett, is back this season. When they're inside the hot spring, these multiple eggs are a pretty clear reference to Alien. These creatures are adapted from the design of the knobby white spiders first created by Ralph McQuarrie for The Empire Strikes Back, but they were first seen in the video game Star Wars Rogue Squadron 3 Rebel Strike. But they were brought into the Expanded Universe canon with the novel Darksaber, which is also the first place we ever heard of the Crate Dragon Pearl that we saw last episode. Wait a minute. Nobby White Spiders, The Pearl, Darksaber, Moff Gideon's Darksaber. Y'all, this season's gonna end with the Empire building a giant laser cannon that doesn't work. Wait and see. Nerd! And here's an interesting fact. Macquarie actually based its design on another creature from fantasy. That's your mom. But seriously, in the new Disney canon, these are more like the Krikna, the spider creatures that we saw in Star Wars Rebels. So during this scary-ass spider scene, I kept waiting for the baby to do the magic hand thing, but he never did. Let's make the baby do the magic hand thing. And I think that's really good. It means that Baby Yoda is not going to be some deus ex machina that can get Mando out of any situation. In fact, in this episode, he's a liability. Now, Mando and company are in deep poodoo when the X-Wing pilots bail them out using A280 blaster rifles like we first saw in The Empire Strikes Back. The pilots let Mando off with a slap on the wrist. Am I under arrest? Technically, you should be. And see, that's exactly the kind of leniency that made the New Republic weak and caused them to fall. But did you also notice that on the sides of their X-Wings, they've painted little TIE fighters, probably showing how many imps they've shot down. It's pretty cool. So it looks like the next stop is going to be the watery planet that we saw in the trailers. And it's actually a moon called Trask in the Kol Ivan sector. So sorry if you had Mon Cala or Camino on your Mandalorian planet bingo card. Well, that's all the Easter eggs I found, but if you found any, at me on Twitter or let me know down in the comments. If it's your first time here, please subscribe. For Screen Crush, I'm Ryan Airy.